Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Overholt. I'm a professor in the biology department at Winston-Salem State University. Today I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about a concept that I think is especially difficult for students, and that is the action potential. Why do we care about the action potential? The action potential is very important for nerve cells, for muscle cells, for heart cells or cells we call excitable cells. Your heart couldn't beat, your nerves couldn't send signals without the action potential. So it's very important. What is the action potential? The action potential is drawn here, it's outlined here. It's simply a change in the membrane potential. So what is the membrane potential? The membrane potential is a potential difference across the membrane of a cell. We can measure that if we put an electrode into the cell, and we can measure the changes in that membrane potential. So, the action potential itself consists of four phases. The first phase, right here, is called the resting membrane potential. When cells are at the resting membrane potential, when they're at a negative membrane potential, we call, we use a term called polarized. Keep this term in mind. It's a very important term because we're also going to use it to describe the other phases of the membrane, the action potential. If we remove polarization, we use a prefix. What do you think we might call that? The second phase is called D polarization. If you're thinking with me, if the membrane potential again goes more negative, we return the membrane potential to the resting membrane potential. What do you think we might call that, that third phase? We call that repolarization. And then finally, we won't talk much about this, but you know the word roots here. If we go past the resting membrane potential, and it becomes more polarized, the term for more is hyper. Okay? So, we're talking about this resting membrane potential. What do we mean by the resting membrane potential? If it's minus 80, do we mean the inside of the cell is minus 80? The outside of the cell is minus 80. We said we can measure it with this electrode. As it turns out, the inside of the cell is negative relative to the outside. Okay? So now, how do we actually change the membrane potential itself? It, 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 it's important that we use and understand the term ion. These changes in the membrane potential are due to changes in the ions. The ions are going to flow and create current. Let's look at some important ions. I'm sure you've heard of many of them before. Sodium, potassium, chloride, magnesium, calcium. And calcium is another very important ion that has a very special place of all the ions. But what we're going to concentrate on today and our simple action potential here that's carrying the information, we're going to focus on two ions, sodium and potassium. As it turns out, sodium is much higher outside the cell than it is inside the cell. Potassium, on the other hand, is a mirror image. It's much higher inside the cell than it is outside the cell. So, I don't want you to just memorize everything. I want you to think about the way this works with me. And you know the answer to this question. Which way do ions and chemicals, things, move? From higher to lower pressure or lower to higher pressure? Higher to lower concentration or lower to higher concentration? Hopefully you answered from higher to lower concentration. So which way is sodium going to move? It's higher outside than it is inside. 
if you're following me, you realize sodium is going to move into the cell. What about potassium? Potassium is much higher inside the cell than it is outside. Which way is potassium going to move? Again, from higher to lower concentration, from inside to outside the cell. So sodium is going to move from outside to inside. Potassium is always going to move from the inside to the outside. All right. Here's where I want you to think with me again. We said this membrane potential refers to the inside of the membrane itself. What's going to happen if a sodium channel opens? We need a channel to allow sodium to go through the membrane. If a sodium channel opens, sodium comes in. We bring in more positive charge inside. What happens to inside the membrane? Are we going to go more positive or are we going to go more negative? Hopefully you realize if sodium moves in, the inside becomes more positive. The membrane potential is going to move more, more positive. So sodium is going to be responsible for this phase of the action potential, sodium moving in, which we called depolarization. On the other hand, if a potassium channel opens, Potassium is going to go out of the cell. We're going to move, remove a positive charge from inside the cell. Which way is the membrane potential going to go? Is it going to go more positive or more negative? We remove a positive charge from inside the cell. The membrane potential is going to be more negative. So potassium, when potassium channels open, it's going to be responsible for re polarization. Okay? Hopefully you understand this. Again, this is very important because many of these ion channels that transmit these, these chemicals across the ions across the membrane are targets for many of the drugs. They're used for things such as hypertension, since ion channels are what forms the way the heart beat. I hope you learned a little bit today. Thank you very much for all your time. Hope to see you soon.